Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Kelly and I'm a chemistry teacher. Today's video is a follow-up on the last one, which was an intro to balancing chemical equations. For that video, click the link in the description below. Any skill in chemistry takes a lot of practice before you master it. So I've picked six different examples that cover more than just the basics. I'll be showing you examples with multi-step questions, combustion reactions, using polyatomic ions, and questions that just aren't obvious. And I'm going to work through each one step by step. This way we can do them together and you can get better at chemistry faster. If you follow along through all six, you're increasing your chances of mastering this skill. So grab your pen and paper and let's get started. Our first reaction starts off with zinc plus HCl yields ZnCl2 plus H2. Here's our unbalanced chemical reaction. And then we're going to write out how many of each element we have on either side of the reaction. Since nothing in the reactant side has a subscript, we have one of each. We have one zinc in the product, and since chlorine and hydrogen both have a two subscript, we know we have two atoms of each of those in the product. So let's start with hydrogen. If I add a two coefficient in the reactant, it doubles the hydrogen and it also doubles the chlorine. This looks balanced already. We have one zinc in the reactant and the product, two hydrogens in the reactant and the product, and two chlorines in the reactant and the product. So this one's balanced with that one move. Our next reaction involves chromium plus sulfur to make Cr2S3. Since chromium doesn't have a subscript, there's only one. Sulfur, however, has eight in the reactant. Looking at the product side, I noticed that Cr has a two and S has a three, so there are two and three respectively. To start balancing, I'm gonna start with chromium and add a two in the reactant. That doubles the chromium from one to two. And then I have eight sulfur in the reactant and three sulfur in the product. Now I have to find my least common multiple between eight and three. Least common multiple. The easiest way to try and get a least common multiple is to multiply the two numbers together. It doesn't always work, but you'll at least get a common multiple and then you can reduce it later. In the best case, you get the least common multiple. So eight times three is 24. So if I add a three coefficient in the reactant, three times eight is 24. And I add an eight coefficient in the product, eight times three is 24. Then that balances the sulfur. However, the eight distributes to the chromium, eight times two giving us 16 chromium in the product. Now I have to go back and look at the chromium in the reactant. If I change that two to a 16, that gives me 16 chromium in the reactant. Let me check that my coefficients are the lowest possible ratio. 16 to three to eight, that cannot be reduced, so we're good. Let me check my work. 16 chromium in the reactant, 16 chromium in the product, 24 sulfur in the reactant, 24 sulfur in the product. We have FeO plus O2 yields Fe2O3. Since iron or Fe in the reactant doesn't have any subscript, there's a one. Oxygen is in two places in the reactant though. Oxygen is in two places here. So we have to be really careful and make sure we count all of the oxygen together every time we count the total for the reactant side. So we have one oxygen attached to that iron atom and then we have two oxygens by itself. One plus two is three. In the product, I just look at the subscript. So I have two iron and three oxygen in the product. Let's start with iron. Add a two coefficient in the reactant. That changes the iron to a two. However, that two distributes to the oxygen. A very common mistake here is that I see students adding two to the three to give you five in the reactant, 
but that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. We have to count the total instead. We only have two oxygen and two oxygen, so a total of four. Now we have four oxygen in the reactant and three in the product. So let's try the least common multiple approach. Four times three is 12. Okay, so how do I get 12 oxygen in the product? Well, if I add a four coefficient, four times three gives me 12. But you know that four is going to distribute to the iron as well. Four times two is eight. So now my iron is out of balance. If I add an eight to the iron in the reactant, if I change that, then I have eight iron in the reactant and it changes the total of oxygen as well. So, okay, eight oxygen plus those two, eight plus two, that's 10. So I'm almost there. I've got 10 oxygen in the reactant, 12 in the product. Oh, so if I add a two here, okay, that makes two times two, two is four. So eight plus four, aha, that's 12. Okay, it looks balanced, but let me check my coefficients and see that they're lowest possible ratio. So I have an eight, a two, and a four. The numbers eight, two, and four can all be divided by the number two. So that makes two a common factor. If coefficients have a common factor, that means they're not reduced yet. Dividing them all by their common factor puts them at the lowest possible ratio. And that's what we want. If I reduce those, I get four to one to two. So our final answer is four to one to two. With those new coefficients, it's gonna give me new totals. So now I have four iron in the reactant, four plus two oxygen, so six oxygen, four iron in the product, and six oxygen in the product. That is balanced. Let's try one with a polyatomic ion. A polyatomic ion is a group of atoms that has a charge and functions like a single unit. If a polyatomic ion is not changing forms from reactant to product, for example, we can see them clearly in the reactant and in the product, then we can write them together when we're balancing the equation. I have one silver or AG in the reactant, and since I have a subscript two in the product, I have two silver in the product. I have one NO3 in the reactant, this whole group, and one NO3 in the product. I have also one SO4 in the reactant and one SO4 in the product. I have two hydrogen in the reactant and one hydrogen in the product. Let's start with the silver. If I add a two coefficient to the reactant, it changes the silver to two, but it also changes the nitrate ion to a two as well. It changes that whole thing. And I'll balance the nitrate in the product by adding a two here. It changes not only the nitrate, but also the hydrogen. And look at that, it balanced the whole reaction. We have ammonium dichromate. That's this whole thing in the reactant. Yields Cr2O3 plus N2 plus H2O. The parentheses in the reactant mean that there are two of those polyatomic ions. So the two distributes to everything inside the parentheses. Notice that my polyatomic ions are not the same in the reactant and the product. They look different. So we're not gonna keep them together. We're gonna balance this equation one atom at a time. We can't keep the polyatomic ions together because they're not staying together from reactant to product. You can use this approach for every reaction with polyatomic ions, but I just like to keep them together if I can. So I have two nitrogen in the reactant. I have two times four hydrogen in the reactant. I have two chromium in the reactant and I have seven oxygen in the reactant. In the product, two nitrogen and two hydrogen. I have two chromium, 
I have oxygen in multiple places. So remember, we have to count the total by adding all of them together. So I'll start here with my hydrogen. If I add a, a four coefficient in the product, that four distributes to the two, giving me eight hydrogen in the product. And the four also distributes to the oxygen. So now I have four oxygen plus those three give me seven total oxygen in the product. And look at that, that one coefficient balanced the whole reaction. This example is a combustion reaction. We have C6H12O6, also known as glucose, plus O2 to create CO2 and H2O. We only have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in this example. So first let's write down how many of each element we have. We have six carbon, 12 hydrogen, and six plus two oxygen. In the product, we have one carbon, two hydrogen, and then we have two plus one oxygen. So three oxygen in the product. For combustion reactions, it's always really helpful if you start with carbon and then balance the hydrogen and oxygen. Trust me on this. If we add a six coefficient to the product, our carbon is balanced. That six also distributes to the two. So six times two is 12 plus one. 12 plus one, we have 13 oxygen in the product. But before we balance the oxygen, let's do the hydrogen. So if I add a six coefficient to the H2O, six times two creates 12 hydrogen. That six also distributes to the oxygen. So now we have a total of 12 plus six oxygen or 18 oxygen in the product. Now let's look back at the reactant. In order to balance out the oxygen, we're only going to add a coefficient to the oxygen that's by itself. And to get 18, we have, all right, six plus, okay, 12. Six plus 12 gives me 18. I can get 12 if I add a six coefficient here. So then a total of 18 oxygen in the reactant. Now let's check that our coefficients are reduced. That is reduced, we can't divide it any further. Now let's check our work. We have six carbon in the reactant and the product. 12 hydrogen in the reactant and the product, 18 oxygen in the reactant and the product, and this reaction is balanced. That's all for today. I'm really proud of you for practicing with me today. As always, thanks for watching. I can't wait to share more with you. To make sure you don't miss it, hit the subscribe button. Stay positive and keep learning.